And what's up? Welcome to the podcast. And today's podcast is a little bit special. Uh, I have my good friend, Danny Miranda here, fellow podcaster. And I wanted to go into this particular episode uh, kind of being, I guess you could say kind of being teased out in terms of the information uh, because this is a big topic for me and I want to be able to convey it in the best way possible. And that's why I brought Danny here because if there's anything I know about Danny, it's that he asks amazing questions and he's just incredible at interviewing. So if there was anyone that was going to get the, the most out of me in this episode, it would be Danny. So Danny, welcome to the podcast. It's an honor to be here and I'm really grateful you asked me to be on this episode and to ask you some questions because I, I'm really excited to do this. So hopefully um, we'll, uh, yeah, 100%. we'll have some fun today. What are we talking <laughs> yeah, about Well, today? we're going to be talking about the journey I've taken uh, by giving up porn and essentially giving up masturbation for the past almost seven to eight years of my life. And what kind of effects that that has had on not only my brain, my body, my spirit, and also the way in which I perceive women as well. So, so that is what we're going to be talking about today. And and yeah, man, uh, don't know how else to to lead into that. Why did you feel the need to bring this up in podcast form and talk about this? I feel that. One of the things that almost no one talks about, and it's almost a taboo subject, is modern day's relationship to porn and also a guy's relationship to even pleasuring himself to a large degree. And I feel like this has had such an impact on my own life in terms of how I perceive things in terms of like even how I treat myself, uh, even biochemically, it's had such an impact on me. So if I can talk about my experiences and be able to relay them in a way that uh, I only know how and, and one person is able to look at this and be able to make a change in their lives, then uh, I've done my job. And as I was saying to you before getting onto this podcast episode, this was a little hard for me. I was going to cancel right before we got onto it. <laughs> and and part of the reason was uh was I just didn't feel ready to do it and uh and and I told you this right before it's just that when we're relaying a part of ourselves that which is uh deep which is uh personal and in which has a large amount of truth to it you're never going to be ready for that it's uh it's like having a baby you you just go out and you do it so so if I can just help one guy uh, you know, have a different perception about how he views uh, porn and relation to himself, then, then I have done my job. Hmm. James Altucher often says, if you are scared to put it out there, that means you need yeah. to put it out there. So it's great that that's happening from your perspective. Now going to the start of this, right? You said this has been a seven yeah. to eight year journey. What was the moment when you said, okay, I need to stop porn. I need to stop masturbating. Take us back to it's, that moment. Uh, the moment started with uh, a girl, like almost like all things in life. You know, it starts with a girl. And uh, unfortunately, uh, this girl had broken up with me and we had been living together. And I thought that we were going to get married. We were together for, for a couple of years. And long story short, uh, we ended up not being together anymore. And that was, that was one of the harder things I've had to deal with in that period of time in my life. And it kind of, it kind of reminded me of just like loss. When you lose something that you think that is always going to be there forever, it, it comes out as this, like this depression, this denial and anger in some cases. And Whenever I think of things that have uh, become crisis in my life, uh, things that I can remember, things like uh, my mom passing away, uh, this particular, or actually uh, in my previous business, uh, one of my uh, one of my trainers actually like 
was stealing clients and she stole like a, a large amount of them. Um, that's probably another story for another time. Um, uh, this breakup, uh, I always look at crisis and the emotions that I feel around it as transitional energy, as transformative energy. And I always have this thing when, um, when bad things, really bad things happen to me, especially with all the emotions that surround it. It's that, you know, emotion is energy. And if I can actually use emotion to build myself up and to fuel myself rather than to burn myself, which is what, what kind of happens a lot when, when people go through these things, then, then you can use this energy for good instead of using it to, uh, to debilitate yourself. So when we broke up together, uh, I, I looked for things to, to really pour my heart and soul into. So I was already into uh, health and fitness. So, you know, taking care of my body, exercising, that, that wasn't necessarily a problem for me whatsoever. Um, the other one was my business. Um, I was already kind of uh, pushing in my business. Uh, I was already kind of in the, the growth stage and uh, there wasn't really like too much I could do to transform that business. And I didn't really want to either because I didn't want to get like more uh, locations or anything like that. I, I just literally wanted to push as I was pushing on my business. So I was looking at all of the habits and the weaknesses that I had in my own life. And one of the untold habits that I had uh, that I would always keep on coming back to, I would quit and keep on coming back to was watching pornography. And with pornography, it's kind of this thing. It's like uh, you you crave it and then you go and watch it. After you're done watching, you're like, God damn it! I shouldn't have done that, and and then you go through this uh, you go through this kind of like stage of where you're feeling guilt and shame, and then maybe an hour later, maybe a day after, maybe like a week after, it, you crave it again, and then you just go and then you do it, and it, it goes through this like cycle of shame uh, each and every time. And I wouldn't necessarily say that I was like addicted to porn. I knew one guy that was actually he would actually go home on his lunch break, and and just like go and, and and rub one out. He would he would be so like he would actually be proud of this when he would tell us, which was like you know pretty pretty funny. Uh, but I, I wasn't necessarily addicted to that to that extent. But I knew that it was uh, something that had a pull on my life, something that I felt like uh, there was a weakness around, and that was something that I wanted to eradicate. And with uh, porn comes, let's just say masturbation as well. Uh, I would look at kind of like uh, masturbation as. Uh, something that I would do, not necessarily to pleasure myself, but something I would use as a crutch. If I was feeling like a certain emotion, I would use this as a crutch. Uh, if I wanted to go to sleep, I would use it as a crutch to go to sleep. Wouldn't necessarily get the best sleep either. And again, there's like there were these kind of like cycles of just shame. Is like this whole vicious shame cycle around watching porn, masturbating, and then it. When I was looking at every one of my weaknesses that I wanted to eradicate or make better or turn to strengths, this was actually one of them that I never really considered. But but it was funny because as I was going through like my research and all this kind of stuff, I happened upon this like uh, this Reddit uh, community called NoFap, and a lot of people would know that. A lot of people probably have been on it before, and. And, and then I saw, and then I remember there was this PDF of like all the benefits that you can get from when I say no fat, it means no masturbation. So all these benefits that people have experienced, whether it be evidence based or not, that they got from uh, from not masturbating, from abstaining from masturbation, and also abstaining from porn. And that led me down a rabbit hole where I was actually watching uh, multiple videos uh, based on. The what happens to the brain when you watch porn, and and then I I remember I was just like pouring through this information, and I was just like holy crap I didn't realize how how bad porn is for the brain, so it was at that moment of time after all this research after all this reading after seeing all these uh, anecdotal uh, accounts of like what happens when you stop, I said to myself okay well I'm going to do a a 14 day challenge. Uh, I'm basically going to uh, not watch any porn. I'm not going to masturbate whatsoever. And what I'm going to do is I'm still going to go on dates because, you know, I, <laughs> like uh, I just broke up with uh, like my um, my ex or I broke up with my ex and then I still want to go on dates. I still want to put myself out there, but 
I told myself I'm not even gonna have sex with them. I'm not even gonna like. I'm not even gonna like bust, as do you, as one would say. And, and that was like the start of uh, of this whole journey down down this rabbit hole. And w- with those first fourteen days, what was the primary changes you noticed? Was it immediate that you noticed these changes, or did they come after? And what were the primary changes I in think general? When it comes to the changes that I experienced, I noticed them when they were at the the third or fourth day. And one thing that I noticed was energy. Uh, and and now that I now that I kind of learned more about dopamine and our our reactions to it. It was like I was going through a dopamine fast where I was like just surging myself with dopamine. Uh, and anything, if you know anything about dopamine, if you get the reward without the effort, then, then that is actually a, a sign where you are uh, addicted to dopamine, but you're not necessarily putting in that effort to get the reward, which actually turns into a negative scenario for your brain and your body. Um, so about the third or fourth day, couple of things that I've realized, and actually during this time, I have been journaling every single day. Just like, okay, so this is what I noticed. This is what I did. And I would journal to myself sometimes multiple times a day because uh, I really wanted to take this as like a, an, an experiment on myself. And that's actually one of the coolest things I love to do. It's just like journal the experiences, turn it into an experiment, make it really like cool and awesome. So the first couple of days, I noticed an uh, increase in energy. Uh, I noticed uh, greater mental clarity. And one of the really cool things about this was it was it was almost changing my perception of women and my perception to women. And one of the things that I realized uh, when I was getting off porn, and, and I think my perception actually started to evolve after like the, the seventh day, the 14th day, even the 21st day of doing this, is that when you watch porn, your perception of women changes dramatically. Uh, you basically have this like buffet of of any type of women that you can that you can choose to get off on, and what happens as a result is is that your views of what you feel is attractive changes. And if there's anything that you know about porn, is that when you start, you maybe start at the most vanilla stuff ever, but then it just keeps on evolving 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 into like just just like some downright weird stuff and i'm not going to get into the this stuff that i was watching like at the end of my porn cycle but i will say it's like it it changes your view of how attractive women are um the the physical representation of women and also just like your feelings towards them and I, i realized that when i was when i was getting off of it I remember like walking into a coffee shop. So I'd always get my work done in a coffee shop. And then I would look at almost like the random average woman. And I would be like, holy fuck, she is so beautiful. And and it would be like women that I would not necessarily be attracted to before. And then that was one thing that I realized when I was watching porn is just like my perception of women changed dramatically as a result of watching it. So so yeah, I mean, other ex- other things that I've experienced, uh, or other benefits you could say I experienced, was just greater self control over myself. Um, one of the things that that I have is an addictive personality. If I like something, I am gonna go like hard with it, you know. And that's actually the reason why I've never tried or wanted to ever try cocaine, because I know that it's like hyper addictive. If I ever tried it, it'd be over for me. Uh, because, because yeah, that's just the way my personality is. Uh, if I like the gym, I'm going to go hard with it. If I like a certain workout, I'm going to go hard with it. Um, and and that's just the way that I am. So, uh, one of the things that I realized is this, this greater amount of discipline, self-control over myself. One could call it like self-mastery, but I think like one thing that, that I was doing was I was going into this habit that was debilitating, uh, to a very large extent. And I was actually taking actions towards healing it, towards uh, not necessarily getting rid of it, but consolidating it, understanding it, and then eventually overcoming it. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, like through through my journals, through everything that I was doing, I found that um, I, I felt like I was just becoming a better person as a result. 
Hmm. You know, it's interesting. School warns us, don't do cocaine. It's really bad for you. I can't remember anybody telling me, don't do porn. It's really bad for you in school yeah. at a young age. So it's just interesting. Maybe it's changed, but it's interesting how that has, um, it's maybe equally as bad for you, but it's not talked about as much. Yeah, and I, and I wonder. Kids. Maybe because yeah, it's so it's, new. I wonder, like sometimes I wonder why that is, but then we live in this uh, world of Twitter where we are so privy to kind of like the the new stuff that comes out maybe like two years later after the fact so so this uh this concept of like not watching porn and the fact that porn actually has this uh debilitating effect on your brain and um i think we're just becoming privy to it it's very new it's very kind of like uh there needs, I guess, for some people, it needs to be like more evidence. I remember I posted something on Instagram about just uh, if you can change, like if you do these things for six months, uh, you know, you're going to turn into a different guy that that you, no one will be, be able to recognize you. One of them was give up porn, and I had so many people, so many people on uh, on the comment section being like, "That's not true. How could you say that?" And all this kind of stuff. And 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 the thing is, is that. Because it's so free, because it's so widely available, and because so many people do it, and because it's so much of an accepted part of our society, that is that is, it's almost like alcohol. Uh, it's already accepted, mm-hmm. and, and everyone thinks that it is uh, normal to do. Um, but every like everything that we know in regards to porn is that this is actually like we have never had this much access to this many types of women, to this many types of different ways to let's just say fornicate ever in in the history of the entire world and i don't think people realize that was there a specific moment that tipped you off that you said oh like i've gone too far like i know this isn't right like how should somebody know or evaluate that their that their porn consumption is normal versus not normal or harmful or is any porn consumption harmful uh i definitely don't know if like any like if you don't, if you can actually control, and I, I, one thing I realize is, or one thing I've, uh, I've experienced is that porn is different for guys than it is for girls. So a girl watching porn, it may be completely different to her. They may kind of perceive it in a different way, but it's different for when a guy and he actually watches it. One of the things that I would say for myself is zero porn whatsoever. Now, how would one know to know that they've gone so far is when you're you actually when, is when you're using it to either numb certain things in your life to kind of like fill up these this uh, amount of time or to numb these emotions that you don't necessarily want to feel or if it's actually having a a detrimental effect to the relationships that you have with the opposite sex and you don't necessarily know that until you actually get off of it. Um, one of the things that, uh, yeah. Well, one of the things that, let me, and if you're uh, editing this, we're just going to wait for Danny to, to let in the cleaner at 1230. All right, we're going to continue. So I, I've heard uh, a large number of people actually say that it doesn't matter if I look at porn. You know, it's my choice. It doesn't affect anyone. And when I see this comment, it actually reflects someone's inability to see outside of themselves. So even if you find yourself saying the same thing, you know, I want to I want to tell you that it actually is uh, completely harmful to the brain and harmful to even your intimate relationships that you have with other women. Now, one of the things is, is that because of our brain's adaptive ability and it gets over flooded with dopamine, it actually alters how it is wired. And this is possibly the reason why people's uh, cravings for porn just become more intense the more that they watch it. And although I, although I labeled it and, uh, and compared it to alcohol, uh, even though I haven't done cocaine before, I really would say that it is kind of close to it's a... Uh, the drug partner of cocaine 
because because when you look at porn, uh, because of uh, the way that dopamine is wired, it just makes you addicted, addicted, and it makes you want it more. So how would someone know? It's uh, if you're using it to numb certain things, if it is affecting the relationships that you have with women, if it's affecting your penis in a certain way that you're not necessarily able to get it up. I remember there was like this um, story about Hugh Hefner and he would have like sex with Playboy bunnies and he would uh, he would have sex with like two or three girls at once. And the thing is, is that after he was done, he would he would finish off by watching porn. Right. So so that is that is when you know it's kind of gotten too far. That is when you know it's kind of gone to a point where there's no control. And, and the last thing is, is that if you cannot control it, if you do it as if you have this like public persona and in private, this is something that you don't have any control over, then I would say that that is a signal that you might want to change things. Hmm. Interesting. And so let's say somebody says, okay, I, I hear you, Dan. I have a problem with porn. I need to change this. What is the first step or steps that they should take to get on a better path? Well, I don't necessarily have uh, the porn manual. I know what works for me or, or the stop watching porn manual, but I definitely know what works for me. So the very first thing is, is uh, to set up blockers, um, to create an environment where you're not going to be accessing it in the first place. So one of those things is uh, I think I use, a, I think the app was called Forced or, or Freedom, actually where you just block those websites from, from ever seeing them. The next thing I would do is I would commit to something small, uh, commit to like a seven day or even like a 14 day challenge, uh, where you're just completely getting off of it. And you commit to something small because when you do that, it can lead to, it can actually start the momentum to commit to something a little bit bigger. And then when you do that, when you do this uh, particular challenge for yourself, whether it be a seven day, 14 day, 21 day challenge, what you're going to do is you're, you're actually going to note down your experiences while you do it. Note down the benefits. Note down the drawbacks. Note down how you feel. Note down your energy. Note down your focus. Note, note down if you're uh, not feeling brain fog anymore. But you want to actually like write down these experiences as you are going through them because the human memory is so fallible. And one of the things that this does is it allows you to identify with these benefits. It allows you to actually like say like a lot of times people would get off of it and be like, that didn't like affect me. But if they really thought about it and journaled these experiences, they would actually see all these little tiny little hinges that open these big doors. So even if you have 10% more energy, even if you're sleeping a little bit better, even if you're using the time that you would use to watch porn and masturbate uh, to go off and to uh, do something that is uh, conducive to building a business or conducive to building your body. These are all these like little tiny hinges, but you don't necessarily see them because you you don't know you, you your memory is just not that good. So one thing I would always say, especially if you want to make any major change in your life, is to journal out the journey that you're doing for yourself. Uh, to journal every single day that you're doing it, even journal out the obstacles and the challenges, especially those. And to get to know yourself to a very large degree and to get to know yourself in relation to this weakness and this habit that you have. And that's what I would say. It's like start small, uh, go abstinent, and then note down the journey that you are taking and make sure that you're setting up your environment to win. Uh, if you hang around friends who talk about porn all day, I mean, obviously, I don't know anyone that I don't know much people that do that. But for me, I actually had a friend that I think I told you, you would go home every single day. I had to stop hanging around that guy because like he loved porn. He was like the biggest fan. And I just had to stop hanging around that dude because like, I, I don't want that. I don't want that kind of message in my brain. Uh, and I don't want to hang around and, and be the average of the five people I hang around most. So I actually had to stop hanging around that guy. So set up your environment, you know, make sure that you're journaling out, give yourself something small, a very small range, tiny range, and then see exactly what the benefits are for yourself and, and see it for yourself, experience it. When you're talking about journaling specifically, are there any particular prompts you like to come back to? Does it matter when you when you do the journaling? And how do you think about the journaling aspect of it? Since I think this is important, 
not just for porn, but for any habit for sure. you're building. For sure. Uh, I love to, I love to just like free. Well, I do a couple of things. One is just freehand. Here's how I'm feeling today. Here's what I'm experiencing today. And I go and I just, I, I, I have this conversation with myself. And I'm like, and I remember I would start my journals and I'd be like, uh, day 14, uh, no porn, no fat. And uh, dude, I, I feel fucking amazing today. Uh, <laughs> let me see if I can actually get uh, one of my journals out. That'd be like super dope. But I would, I would literally have this conversation with myself saying, okay, well, this happened, that happened. And this is what I experienced today. This is uh, these. And one of the other things that I also did was I would just like evolve my journaling technique. And what I mean by that is, you know, I started off by uh, just telling myself and just talking to myself to a very large extent to just having this conversation with myself. And then I would evolve to doing uh, gratitude journaling. I would evolve to doing uh, what are my daily wins? Like, what are the wins that I had as a result of living out this day? And one of the things that I realized as I was doing this was just like, you, you actually have like, especially like when you're doing uh, something like giving up porn or giving up uh, something of this, something of this nature, it is really just like going into this whole idea of, you know, noting down all these little in almost like tiny insignificant uh things that happen in life that you would not necessarily uh be privy to or experience or even be aware of in the first place so uh, I'll, I'll say this is one was like on day 13 of uh of doing the journey and <laughs> i i started off with like had an incredible night with my brothers uh last night you know just felt so integrated into the conversation and, uh, and you know what, I, I was just like very aware and very full and very present, uh, you know, just in the way this, this almost attracts people into my life in a way. I feel like the way I bring presence is a way that people feel ease with me and comfortable. Uh, and I spent the entire day with this guy, Dustin, Dustin is like one of my uh, very close friends. He actually lives in mass in Wisconsin. Uh, he's such a good friend of mine. So and he's so in charge of his shit that I'm super grateful to have him as a friend. And overall, I just feel alive and I don't know how to explain it, but I just feel more alive more than I ever have been ever before. Now I, I wrote down some major drawbacks or some drawbacks to this challenge is like, number one, my balls are kind of hurting because I haven't like <laughs> exactly. He's like, I never knew this uh, phenomenon called blue balls was actually real, but I felt it yesterday and it was really uncomfortable. Uh, and <laughs> And one of the things actually like uh, not to get like too deep into these journals because I do get somewhat personal with them is that raging boners, um, you know, it's just like the thought of a girl actually is just it, it's enough to like send me into into getting like uh, more blood flowing down in that area. And uh, one of the things that it does or going through this process and I actually found that I do think about girls more often, but it doesn't take me off the path at all. You know, I just actually use that energy into making myself and my business a lot, a lot better. And actually during that time, uh, I had hit a record month in my previous business <laughs> from like 14 days of doing this. So one of the things that uh, I've talked about with one of my friends, this guy, Dominic Cortuccio, I think you should uh, actually interview him. He's like, he's a fantastic guy, incredible speaker, TEDx guy. Um, and one of the things that he says is that a lot of men uh, see an incredible amount of success in their 40s because that is when they are they are masterful over their own sexual energy. That is when they're in control of their own sexual energy. So his uh, like this is also like kind of tied into like Taoist belief. But what happens as a as a guy when he's forty and when he has master or mastery over his sexual energy is that he uses that energy to go out and to make something of himself to to, to succeed in life, as opposed to like younger people who just like you know jerk it off jerk off that energy and then just become uh, demotivated and, uh, and, and basically just like couch potatoes as a result. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the question was uh, before that, but I'm glad I got into the, the weeds of it. Uh, but yeah, man, that was, yeah. that was actually kind of cool. So we spoke about the initial 14 day challenge. Was there anything after that? Did you do another, like, how did, how did it, on the 15th day did you start using porn and that's okay i'm just curious from no for sure um I, okay so 
after the 14 days, uh, because of all the things that I had uh, experienced as a result, I, I actually kept it going. Um, I kept it going nice. uh, for a... V- actually, I haven't even looked at porn since the, the, the time that I stopped. Like to this freaking day. Since the 14 day S- since initial the, challenge. Yeah, before the 14 day initial challenge had not even gone into it, had not even like watched a drip of it. And if I do see something like on wow. online, I'll be like, fuck this. Because it's not, it's, it's like when you do it so many times and you have this, uh, when you actually have a greater understanding of what it does and then you develop an identity around not watching it anymore, then when you're looking at it, you're just like, screw this like i i am not gonna even do this anymore and and one thing i I kept doing after that particular time was uh i kept on journaling Uh, i kept on journaling how my my life as i was experiencing it i'm actually on this journal right now where i'm on like day 315 (laughs) and and i I don't talk about like porn or anything like that anymore I, i i literally just talk about my life at that moment and every single and I just find like um, I, I found that even my perception of self and my relationship to self uh, changed over this uh, period of time. Uh, even like on day three, three fifteen, I said, you know, uh, to end off one of my journals, I said, "I love you, Dan. Dream big. Act towards your dreams. Make them a reality." And this is kind of like how I would uh, how I would then every single journal that I had for myself. And and here's also the other thing that. Uh, uh, I experienced as a result of getting off of this is that this is before I, I had met my wife actually. So I told myself like, I'm not going to like masturbate. Um, I'm only going to have sex, right? That's, that's what I literally told myself. I'm like, I'm not even going to like do this. I'm, I'm not going to pleasure myself. The only reason that I would actually ejaculate a bus, I actually gave myself permission to, I think after about three months, I gave myself permission to do that. Cause even then I was dating women. And I was saying, you know what, uh, you know, we can we can mess around with each other, but I'm not I'm not going there, right? It was like this challenge to myself, right? And one thing I realized, like going through this challenge and uh, not watching porn, not watch, not masturbating, doing all this kind of stuff, is that it, it it increases your game with women because you cannot you cannot satisfy yourself anymore. You you have to go out and you have to get it if you want to if you want to feed the beast so to speak. So so you know when I was doing this, I started dating women, started dating a lot of uh, a lot more women, and as a result, um, I felt like my game was at the top of the top, and and I would date and I would date uh, a number of women until the point where I got like super sick of it. And I was just like, you know what? This is like the most empty thing ever. So uh, this is a long story. I got I got rid of all the women that I was dating. I was like, I'm just going to be alone by myself. And, and and what I really want is to be with someone that I can actually share my life with at some point in time. And that's actually maybe like a month or two after that, I found my wife after that. Um, but yeah, like one thing I realized as I was going through this whole challenge was like my, my, uh, my experiences with women uh, amplified. And not only was I having better experiences with them, but you know, when you don't give yourself the option to release, uh, so to speak, or to release yourself, you go out and you hunt. That's what you do. And and I don't know if that's. I definitely don't think that's evidence based. Maybe like my experience is a little bit anecdotal in regards to that. But but I remember I putting myself out there a lot more, meeting a lot more women, and, and just like putting myself out there to to put myself in a position to to date more women as a result. Yeah. You, you said a, a few things there I want to touch on, but one of them is how you removed porn from your life, a negative habit, and it, a result of that was a positive one joined its place yeah. in terms of journaling or going out and actually meeting women. I think that's so important to highlight because it's like you don't just get the additional benefit from going to negative to zero. You get the the delta between the negative and the positive, which turns into an incredible improvement. Can you explain what delta is? Uh, I I asked my friend this before, and then then he he gave me this explanation I still can't understand. But when people say that, when you say delta, what what exactly does that mean? Delta Uh is the difference. Uh It's the difference between, let's say, if 
if the porn habit was making you a negative three and you meeting women is mm. a positive three, the delta is the difference is Ooh. plus six, right? So that's a massive difference. You don't just go from negative three to zero. You go from negative yeah. three to plus three. I love it's, that. Yes. Does um, that make that's sense? That's uh, exponential. That's exponential difference then right there. Yeah. It, it's huge. And so it's really important to uh, highlight that, I think. And yeah, another thing that I think is worth mentioning is that you saw people or girls when you didn't even want to. We live in such a sexualized culture where you can literally open up Instagram, be fed a, a, a video or a photo of a woman you don't even know and they're half naked in some respect. And it's just like, how is that happening? And so talk about the sexualized culture that we live in in the West and how that impacts your desires, your urges, and, and what a, a role you think well, that plays. In regards to the role that it plays, I feel like it is uh, influencing. Uh, you know, we're, we're up here, we're doing a podcast, uh, we're on Twitter, obviously, like we're influencers as well. But they're influencing women and men to actually look a certain way, to actually think a certain way, to actually, uh, to actually like be sexualized in a certain way, and it's almost becoming normal in our society right now for for women to actually just. I mean, it was it was actually the it's, it's been the case since uh, since the beginning of time, but. Uh, women using their bodies in order to uh, to sell, or now in our case, in order to influence, and this is um this is not something that uh, I I would support, so to speak. You know, I would rather someone use their brain before they use their body, and and I feel like this is just something that's being accepted in our culture. And at the same time, at the same time, it's also it's also not necessarily being talked about. It's almost like this taboo thing that not necessarily a lot of people are talking about. And that's the whole contradiction around this whole this whole uh, idea, even with like porn in general. It's like uh, we know it's having a detrimental effect. Uh, we know that influencing people. I, I remember actually. So I was having this conversation, or my wife was actually having this conversation with um, one of her friends, and one of her friends was like, "Hey, every single time that I, you know, put a like show some cleavage on my inf on my Instagram, uh, I get like two thousand views and like all this kind of stuff." Anytime that I put like a shirt on and like, you know, people don't see my cleavage, then, you know, uh, I only get like 200 views and it's the algorithm. I'm telling you, like the algorithm is like pushing people to do this or whatever. And I was telling my wife, I was like, it's not the algorithm. It's like when you uh, attract people with this particular thing, you are attracting people who are attracted to that particular thing. And that is why people are going to follow you. Now, the hard part is attracting people with, let's just say, your brain, your thoughts, your ideas. That's the long road. It's a longer road than most. But if you choose that road, you choose the long path, which is the hard path, which actually becomes the easy path. If you choose the other path, then what you're doing is then every single time you have to sell something, every single time that you want people to interact with you, then you got to show something. And, and that is like this, uh, this short-term game that a lot of people are playing on Instagram and a lot of people are playing uh, on social media in general. It's the short-term game where they're trying to use their external to attract people so they can see their internal. When the reality is, is that we have to actually use our internal, our thoughts, our ideas, our beliefs, our experiences to attract people. And then, you know, eventually people will be like, oh, I stay, I, you know, I stayed here because you actually have a really good brain. I came here because you actually have a really good brain. And I'm very glad that I found your brain in the first place. I'm glad that I found the way that you think. And, 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 and that's the thing. It's like, we're living in this like sexualized culture where everything is based on status, wealth, the way that you look. And, you know, I, I, to a certain degree, I actually play with that a lot as well, because the way that you look, uh, making yourself more attractive, I'm about taking advantage of everything, right? I'm about setting yourself up to be in the best position possible because people do treat you better when you're attractive, but there is a line. <laughs> and, and for me, the line is like, okay, so the line is actually understanding the second and third order consequences of why, of what is going to happen when you do this certain thing. So for me, if I was to, uh, you know, let's just say like if I chose to do steroids, if I chose to, uh, you know, just uh, to 
to just like have a six pack and to just like promote that all over the web, I have to understand that the second or third order consequence is that, hey, guess what? Like people are coming for that, not necessarily for the thoughts that are in my brain or the things that I'm putting out there. If, I, if I'm okay with slower growth and if I'm okay with uh, kind of just like the, the slow roll of using my thoughts and ideas to attract people to what I'm doing, then then I would rather much take that that because I know for a fact that number one, that's going to sell more in the end. And number two, uh, I don't have to take off my shirt every single time I need views. So that is my that is like me personally kind of look, looking at it from that particular aspect of things. And, and just in general, like, uh, you know, I have a daughter, uh, maybe we're going to have like another kid coming in here. Um, but the, something that I want to be an example of is attracting people based on the quality of your thoughts rather than the quality of your body. And, and that is, and that's actually one of the reasons I never even posted. So I have this like really ripped picture of myself, like fucking like shredded, you know? But what is the picture that I put up on uh, Twitter and Instagram of like when I am shirtless, you know, on the very odd time? It's me at 40 where I am right now. Um, four pack, you know, not necessarily like in the most shredded state ever. But but that is real. That is true. And most of the time, 99% of the time, I'm putting out ideas, putting out thoughts out there. And that is something I want to be an example of for for my kids uh, or for my, my daughter and my future kids, if, if we ever are blessed to have one. It's uh, to use your brain to attract people to uh, who you are as a person rather than uh, using your body. Yeah, this is something I admire about you so much is that it's very easy as a fitness coach to put out your body and nobody is going to think twice or say anything negative to you. Oh, he's just using his body to help more people and become become fitter. But you say, you know, you you took it a step deeper and you realized that putting your body out there in that way wasn't healthy or wouldn't be promoting the thing you actually want to be promoting and using your brain and it, it just it takes a level of awareness and and just deep understanding. <laughs> So I admire Thanks. you for that. And where do you think that uh, comes from? I was, talk I was having a conversation with one of my good friends, this guy, John Goodman. Um, and I, I should put you guys in touch with each other. He's a fantastic entrepreneur, uh, definitely someone that you may want to have on the podcast. And uh, I was having a conversation with him just like on Friday. And, and one of the things that, that came out was like, when we hear, uh, let's just say like, <laughs> one of our friends, Dennis Demore, he, he came out with this. Um, he came out with this uh, tweet before. He's just like, "Lord, give me the confidence of a twenty-year-old uh, person on Twitter giving like life advice or something like that." He's like, "It's hilarious," and 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 I told John that he was he, he was laughing. But one of the things that came out was a result of, dude, I've been doing this for eighteen years. Um, I've seen the cycles. I've owned a gym. I was a personal trainer. Uh, I, I now own a, uh, coaching business. And, uh, one of the things I've realized in like the 18 years is like the life cycle of, uh, someone in fitness when they do certain things like this, I've been through like even the internet marketing age, uh, it's still going on right now, but before it was like, it was really like slimy and I've done everything. I've actually like, you know, admittedly I had sold my soul before, right? And that's why I know I shouldn't sell my soul ever again. Like one of the things I did back then was just like I would uh, I would put out these like uh, affiliate offers on email, and to some people, be like, "Hey, you're helping people," or whatever it is. But the reality is, is that you know, if you if you don't believe in what you sell, then you, you don't you shouldn't. If you don't even see what you're selling, you shouldn't even be putting it out there in the first place. So I've I've been through these cycles. I've I've made the mistakes. I've actually done the the. I've actually done things that I am not necessarily proud of. And that is the reason why I know what I know right now. And I've learned these lessons already. So that is why, like, even when I approach like social media um, and, and I, and I learn about, and, and I'm seeing like what other people are doing, it's like, Hey, like I want people to be able to feel in their soul, the 18 years of mistakes uh, of the successes and everything that I've learned along the way. I'm fucking like 42. I'm going to turn 43 this year, you know? So uh, I, I, <laughs> I'm no spring chicken. So I've seen the mistakes that I've made. I've seen the mistakes that other people have made as a result of 
uh, as a result of building up their brand and building up themselves on social media and, uh, and also the internet in general. And, and that is why I, I do what I do. That is why I, I, uh, I actually act the way that I act. It's a, it's, it's a result of like 18 years of just like, uh, just making so many fucking mistakes. That makes a lot of sense. And bringing the conversation back to porn, I'm curious how we mentioned your wife before, and I'm curious how your relationship with your wife is better because you don't yeah. consume porn. It is, I, I, I've never experienced my relationship with my wife while watching porn, thank God, um, to, to maybe like very extreme people like watching porn uh, while having a wife would actually be like considered cheating. And I can see why that is. I can see where that's coming from. And for me, when I, when, because I'm not watching porn, I get to see the fucking beauty of my wife. Not only like, not only the external beauty, because my wife is, my wife is fucking hot. All right. Like she is hot, but I get to see her internal beauty i get to see who she is as a person i don't see her as a commodity i don't see her as something to parade around i i actually get to see deeply who she is at her soul and at her soul she is one of the most amazing people that i have ever brought into my life that's actually the reason why i i married her i was like i like i can't not be not happy if I'm around you because she is literally one of like the happiest people that I've ever met in my entire life. And if I was looking at other women, if I was looking at other women on porn, especially, then I would not necessarily have this uh, gratitude and this appreciation for her because I would always be seeking something far off in the distance that I may or may not necessarily be able to get. And I would always be thinking, what is out there? What is more? You know, who else is out there? when I'm watching these hundreds, if not thousands of like different women on these screens. So for me, it like, it helps me see deeper into the relationship that I have. It helps me see her deeper and be able to have more appreciation for her. And, and I think that, you know, if I were looking at so like a buffet of women every single freaking day and just getting off to them, it would actually make me lose appreciation for what I have in front of me. So there is the cliche. It's like the grass is green. Uh, where you water it, right? The grass is not green on the other side. The grass is green where you water it. Well, the thing with porn is, is that, you know, when you're looking at, when you're looking at porn, you're looking at other people's lawns, like hundreds of other people's lawns every single day. You're like, that lawn's great. Why is that lawn not doing this thing for me? Why is that, why, why is that garden look better than mine? You know? And, and for me, it's like, no, you, I love commitment. I'm, I'm going to put it out there. I actually do think that we, we live in a commitment phobic society at this point, at this point where you can't commit to one thing. And I love the, the aspect of like being able to commit to one thing, being able to set, to actually say, I'm going to commit to one person. I'm going to commit to this one business. I'm going to make it as awesome as humanly possible. And that to me actually relieves a lot of the decisions I have to make in the rest of my life and the rest of the things that I have to do. So so yeah, greater appreciation, me being able to see her soul, uh, me being able to, to still be attracted to her because I'm not looking at thousands of other women. That, that to me is like the, the epitome of uh, not having to watch all this kind of stuff in my life. Yeah. So what you just said reminds me of something I heard about porn one time that really threw me for a loop and made me stop and say, wow, that's crazy. And it was the idea that if you, if you're watching porn, it's the equivalent to you going to somebody's house and looking inside their window and watching two people have sex. And to think about how odd that behavior would be, and you would stop and be like, what am I doing right now? You, it just, in that moment, I was like, wow, that, that's really true. So that's um, just an analogy that I don't remember how that came across my and mind. Think but, of the uh, shame that comes yeah, along with that, impactful. right? Think of the shame. Yeah. Like one thing I will say is like, you're not watching porn in front of a fuck a shit ton of other people, right? You're doing it underneath yeah. your covers. You're locking the door. There's no consequence, Zero consequence as well. at all. Zero. 
and yeah. and we we haven't even talked about like the the methods of which people get into porn in the first place, which if you go down deep into that rabbit hole, uh, it is it is dark. It is one of the darkest things ever, and and I don't know enough about to talk about, but I've I've just heard enough to to understand that uh, there are certain people that are taking advantage of certain people. So so there is this there is this level of shame that comes along with it, because one. You are you're getting yourself off without putting any effort towards it whatsoever. I mean, that is like the 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 far off thing that no one ever thinks about, but that's actually what's happening. You're you're getting off without actually having to put effort, and and that alone, it's like uh, it it just signifies that you're not necessarily going to appreciate what you got. The other thing is is that if you do it in, if you're doing it in private and you're doing it because you don't want other people to see i mean there is a some sort of shame that comes along with that and the thing with shame it it, it almost like starts this addictive cycle you feel shame you feel guilt you got to numb that out so what do you do you go off and you watch porn again and then you go off and you rub one out and it just becomes a cycle over and over and over and then you just keep on doing it because like what happens as a result is is that you are going to be addicted to the it's like a smoker right so a smoker, they're not just addicted to nicotine, they're addicted to the aspect, the physical aspect of putting the cigarette in their mouth. They're doing it maybe hundreds of thousands of times in their lifetime, right? The same thing goes with like you rubbing one out. <laughs> it's like you're addicted to the physical aspect of you doing that. And even though you don't want to do it, your body's just going to want to do that, especially if you do it like, you know, way too often as well. So yeah, man. I think the the key point that I took away from that is we should be skeptical of doing things where we get reward without expending yeah. effort. And those are the activities, the ideas. You could apply this to any facet of your life. If you're getting rewarded without putting in effort, there's going to be a disconnect between yeah. reality and you're not going to, you're going to lose in that agreement yeah. that you're making and, and what yourself. makes you want to go out there and get the thing that you want what is what is that thing that's going to motivate you if you're already getting it without even having to do anything right yeah so that brings me to my next question of like how do you find a wife because a lot of people are in this position maybe watching porn and they're not they're like well i can't get any girls to begin with so <laughs> like why not do this instead I don't know if that's for everyone, but let's say someone is in that position. How do they go about finding women in the real world? That's, a, that's an that's an awesome question. We can we can literally go so many ways with this. I I always go back to making yourself the most awesome version of yourself ever. That's the first thing. So how do I find a wife? Well, a lot of people are like, well, like, there's no quality women out there. It's like, well, dude, have you tried making yourself a quality man? Right. And for me, at least, and I, and again, I always relate things back to my experience and also the, th the things that I see with other people. It's like when you are in the throes of improving yourself, whether it be physically, mentally, financially, whatever it is, like all of these, like all of these things are just like self development cycles. Uh, building a business is a self development cycle, building your body is a self development cycle, uh, building your spirit is a self-development cycle. Even getting off of porn uh, and journaling, that's a self-development cycle. So when you're in the, when you are actually committed to developing yourself, and I, I like to look at it as like, be the magnet. Don't, don't necessarily uh, be out there trying to like grab and nab. Yes, you got to learn game, all this kind of stuff, but try to be a magnet first for the type of woman that you want to, that you want to attract. Now, when I, before I found my wife, one of the things that I got very clear on was aside from the external uh, look of this particular woman that I wanted to attract in my life, what are the internal aspects, the values that she should have, right? <laughs> what are these things? I, okay, so I'll tell you a little story. So I remember um, I was like really deep into dating at this point, uh, probably like two or three years in, um, dating multiple women, uh, you know, just just really having a lot of fun with it. And I was getting really tired of it too. I, re I remember I went to New York and I went to this uh, mastermind. Uh, in this mastermind, they actually we actually raced cars. Uh, we were a bunch of like entrepreneurs. We raced cars together. Then we talk about uh, life shit afterwards. So we are, we're in this circle 
and then uh, and then I asked. It was in the, it was in this phase. I was like, "What is this point of marriage? I don't get it. You know, I just don't get it." Right? And I asked in this uh, circle. I was like, "Guys, this is about like thirty people around me, thirty guys." And they're like, "Okay, guys, like, you know, what's the point of marriage? Uh, I I don't get this. Like, you you basically give up half of your net worth. Um, you uh, you get." You have to be with one woman for the rest of your life and have sex with one woman for the rest of your life. And then all the answers that I got in that particular mastermind, they were horrible because they gave me all the cliches. They were like, oh, you're just going to share your life with someone. And oh, my God, you get to have kids and like all this kind of stuff. I'm like, I remember I got all the answers. I'm like, this sucks. And uh, and I was actually I want like for me is like I wanted to kind of like believe in the idea of marriage and the idea of being with someone. But I wasn't given enough good reasons. So I remember I left the mastermind and then uh, uh, I remember my my friend, uh, this guy, Andy Drish, he came up to me. I was sitting at the table because I was like, because I remember I was like, fuck, that sucked. <laughs> like, I guess I'm just going to be like dating for the rest of my life. Um, and then he came up to me and he said, Dan, so I've thought about this and I've had the same question as you did. Now, I'm not going to say that this question uh, is one that I'm going to be able to answer for you, but this is this is the way that I see it, and this is what changed my perception. So a marriage is a place where you can have two people uh, build a vision out together with you, build a vision out together. Uh, it is it is much more fulfilling to be able to work with someone uh, to build out a life vision, not a bit, not just a business vision, but a vision for your life, uh, for interpersonal relationships, for our finances, for uh, the way in which you want to live and experience life, the environment that you want to live in. And that to me is what marriage is. It's the ability to build out a vision with someone else. And then when he said that, I was like, dude, that is what I can get behind, right? That is what I can actually attach, sink my teeth into. I love that. And and one of the things I also realized is that not a lot of people, I'm so thankful for this group because a lot of people are successful and they have successful relationships, but there's not a lot of people out there who, ha who see successful people who also have successful marriages and relationships as well around them. They don't have these examples around them. So after I heard that, I ended up, uh, my friends dropped me off. I remember I was in New York. I was actually going to stay at this girl's house who I just met uh, to, to go to, uh, to get off and go to a plane. And get back to get back home, and I remember the pret a manger was about to 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 close in about twenty minutes. I took out my journal and I wrote down. I was like, okay, well, aside from looks, because I know I have to be attracted to this woman, what are all these qualities and values in this woman that I would need her to have, or I would need to have in order for me to uh, consider to be in a long term relationship with? I wrote all those things down. And then afterwards, I asked myself the most important question. Who do I have to be to attract this woman into my life? Right? Who do I have to be in order to live up to these values that I am trying to attract? That I, this woman I'm trying to attract. And then I wrote all those things down. I remember I came back home and, and I literally texted every single girl that I was dating at that time. I was like, we're done. I'm not seeing you. I'm going to be alone for a long time. And, uh, and yeah, like this is, this will be the last conversation that we're going to have with each other. <laughs> and, and it was tough. It was really tough. Uh, it's basically like, uh, it's basically like giving up the golden handcuffs. You know, it's, it's literally like giving up the golden handcuffs, but I spent about like two or three months on my own journaling again, being like, okay, well, just like building myself up as a person. Because I think like to a certain extent, when you date so many women, that turns into a distraction as well. That actually turns into this numbing agent. And, and it, it, like, that's something that I realized, you know, you go from like one thing that you're numbing yourself with to a totally different thing that you're numbing yourself with. And that's something that I realized going through that, uh, going through that uh, experience. But, but for me to attract, when I think about attracting, I think about magnets. I think about, okay, so, so, you got to build yourself up to be the person who is worthy of the person that you want to eventually marry. Right. And that is where you start. It has nothing to do with learning game and going out and trying to talk to women. It has everything to do with building yourself up as a human being to the person that you feel is going to attract this person who you feel is worthy to, to live out your life with. Then after that, 
what you want to do is you want to learn, you want to put yourself out there and you want to actually give up all the safety nets that you have. <laughs> I am, I'm a big believer in no plan B's, right? So I remember when, uh, when, uh, I was starting my first business, my, my dad was just like, well, have this like regular job while you're starting this business. So you have something to fall back on. And I am the guy that burns the motherfucking ships. I don't do well with plan B's because I don't want to look there and be like, okay, well, I can always fall back on this. I'm like, no, no, no. Throw me in the deep end. Let me figure it out. Okay. I remember just like a side story from this as well. It's like, uh, I I never learned how to drive a manual car. And then I bought a manual car to make myself learn how to drive a manual car. Then I had to drive it about 40 minutes all the way back to Toronto. And I just got like a quick 20 minute lesson before I took the car out. That's like the kind of guy I am. Like, give me no safety nets. And if the worst case happens, I stall. That's that's fine. That's totally cool with me. But but again, like I don't like safety nets. So like anything that's a safety net for you, get rid of it and put yourself out there into the arena and understand that it's going to suck. Understand that you are going to you are going to feel rejection. You are going to feel fear. You are going to you are actually going to get your shit kicked in. I remember every single time everyone asked me, yeah, Dan, I don't even know how to surf. But I'm going to go surf with you. I tell them spend two. You're going to spend two weeks getting your shit pushed in. All right. Just be prepared for that. And that's the thing with this whole thing as well. It's like be prepared for be prepared for the worst. Be prepared for your shit to kick in. Be prepared to be challenged. And at the same time, after you're done all that stuff, guess what? You got skills. And then you put yourself through the fire and then you figured it out. So so yes, like after you build yourself up, learn the game, learn how to talk to women, learn how to attract them, learn how to put yourself out there, put yourself in positions where you can actually be able to access these women and then just let the journey take it, take over, let yourself kind of just improve little by little journey out the or journal out the process. And that's what I would say to someone who's like looking to find uh, this particular woman inside of their life. That's beautiful advice and really helpful. A lot of different nuggets in there. One thing that I want to highlight is you saying, making the list of the qualities of the woman and then asking who do I have to become to attract that person. I think it's just an incredible exercise. And to relay it back to our conversation around porn, it's like, would the woman that I want to attract want me to be jerking off X number of times per week? But the the answer, it it varies probably depending on the person you want to attract, but it's- it's Is porn conducive to being in a great relationship, right? That's just the thing you got to ask yourself. Right. And if it's no, if it's a net negative, then honor that if you want to get into it. Right. And, and again, I I know I I, I do well with abstinence, but, but again, ask yourself, what is conducive to creating the best experience for yourself in whatever outcome that you want, then line yourself up with your environment to make that happen as much as possible. How did you meet your wife? Funny enough. uh, I, okay. It's very funny where I was, uh, I woke up one day and I was just like, woke up, I was doing my thing, my morning routine, pop up in my phone. Uh, and you know, like on the, on Instagram, they have this explore page where you can see a bunch of stuff right now. There's like reels and everything like that. But before it was just like photos. So I, I see this girl's picture on Instagram and for some reason, like my intuition just like hits me. It's just like, you must message this girl. And I never, I don't slip into DMs and I do it for a very specific reason because I don't, I never want the, cause I, I never wanted, I could always get girls like in real life. So I never really needed to like slip into DMs, but also there was like the second order consequence of like this girl being like, Oh, ho, ho, like Dan go like message me. Like they could post it on like online. And, and I knew like, you know, with online, everything's forever kind of thing. So I was like, I never like, I would never do that. But for some reason, something told me is like, you got to like talk to this girl. It was like this intuition and it just struck me like a fucking hammer. So one thing that I realized was, I was like, hey, this girl's actually a friend of mine on Facebook. And I'll tell you like what, what were the coincidence from that was uh, in a little bit. And I ended up uh, being like, okay, so how do I message this girl? And my friend, uh, Jordan Gray, who uh, is this relationship coach, uh, he ended up having this blog way back then of like how to like how he found his girlfriend and how he messaged her on like Facebook. So 
I took the his exact same line and I messaged her. And then if you want to like use this line, if you're listening to this, you want to use this line and you want to like DM someone, go ahead. I basically just uh, I found her um, I found her uh, Facebook profile. I realized I was friends with her and then I messaged her there and I said, hey, like you don't know me. I don't know you. But for some reason, I, I just like really dig your energy and I, and I dig what you're putting out there. You don't have to message me back whatsoever. I just want you to have a great day. Click. And afterwards, maybe like a day or so afterwards, she messaged me like, haha, like, uh, nice to meet you or whatever it is. Uh, right after that, I was just like, do you have a boyfriend? Like next message. She's like, you're kind of forward. And I was just like, oh, like, yeah, I, I didn't explain. I was just like, well, just answer the damn question, you know? And one thing I realized, uh, when we look back, we met each other. And then right when I met my wife, I was like, okay, well, okay, this is it. Like, you know, those things where it's like, you'll know, you know, when you know, it's like that, that kind of happened to me. It was just like, oh shit. Like that, it just like, it just felt, it just felt it, you know? But when I messaged her and when we looked back at the messages, uh, we went back even further because she had messaged me initially way back then, way long time ago. And she had read like one of uh, the, these articles on my, one of my blogs. And then she basically said, you know, uh, hey, really dig everything that you're doing right now. Um, you know, great job, you know, great blog post, whatever it is. And me just, <laughs> I messaged her back. I was like, okay, cool. Well, you know, you can buy my products here. You can, uh, you can join my chair here. <laughs> totally like brushed her off like a, as a fangirl and she never messaged me back after that. But that's like something that we just uh, have a good laugh over and whatnot. But, but that's essentially how I, how I met my wife. Did you realize that she had messaged you prior when you first not sent at all? Her message? I just found it. I just yeah. like because even for me, I was just like, "Holy crap!" There's so many nerves around sending that message because I'd never, in a million years, like would would do that. But I was like doing it at this moment, so I was like, I just sent the message and I didn't even want to look at it. You know, it's like I sent it and I was like closed it and I didn't even check it. And I was just like, I don't even want to think about this yeah. right now because it's going to totally like mess up my day. And I, I got so much shit to do in this day. I, I don't even want to think about this. So so I literally just messaged her and then I just like forgot about it. Yeah. yeah. And then how long between you quitting porn and meeting your wife? I think was that was there? about, uh, I'm going to call it anywhere between probably around two to two and a half, maybe three years, possibly. Yeah. Around there. Yeah. I. I, I want to highlight that because it's like, it's probably the work that you were doing three years ago, a thousand yeah. days prior is what led to that moment. And would you be in that position it to message her or could you mentally have done that if you were, oh, let yeah. me just watch more. And when I think about it, it's, uh, it reminds me of like the Chinese bamboo tree, right? Uh, the Chinese bamboo tree, it's like nothing happens for about like two years and then after after like uh, maybe six months, it, it you after maybe six months you see like a little tiny leaf, and then maybe after like another like six months after that, it grows into like something like nine feet or whatever it is. And and the thing is, is that uh, all these things that I was doing underneath the surface, uh, they were growing these roots, right? It, it was growing these internal roots, these internal beliefs, these internal perceptions, and these ways in which I look at myself and the ways in which I actually perceive the world, and. And when I, when I think about it, now that you pointed out, I never actually like thought about it like that whatsoever. Never thought about it like that. But one of the things that me and my wife say to each other is like, Hey, if I met you a year earlier, if I met you like two years earlier, if I met you like when I was like 25 or whatever, like we would not be married right now. We would not, we would be two completely different people. And I do believe that, uh, not to make like the whole concept of marriage harder, but it takes the right person, the right place, the right time. Right. <laughs> And we were all those things at one point, just like two meteors, just like hitting, t hitting together at the right particular time at that point. And the meteors were a result of the work that we did to get to that point. So, so I never really, I never thought about that until you actually uh, mentioned it. But yeah, it was because of these, uh, because of the way I developed myself as a result of going through everything that I did. Uh, that's why I built myself up to be able to attract this woman into my life. I think that's a beautiful place yeah. to wrap it up and come to a close. When you talk about the journey from a negative habit to building this beautiful bamboo tree that turns into your wife and yeah. daughter, it's like it all starts 
a lot of it starts from one simple habit. And so I'm so grateful for you for having the courage to share your truth, even though it was uncomfortable when we started, but you persisted. I think I really got a lot out of this conversation. And is there anything else you'd like to leave the audience with before we wrap it up? I truly feel that uh, this was one of the biggest turning points in my entire life, uh, giving up one of my biggest weaknesses. And one of the things that you actually mentioned before was uh, the Delta. And here's the thing. It's like, let's just say you decide to give up porn, um, whatever it is. You want to be able to replace it with something that is of equal positive outcomes for you. You never leave yourself out of habit or getting rid of a habit at a vacuum because the, the habit's just going to come back if you don't fill up that time and space. So if you do end up giving up porn, um, if you do end up uh, going no fap or whatever, then you want to replace it with something that's going to build yourself up. Use that time, use that energy to to build yourself up, to make yourself into the the person that uh, that you feel like you can become. And that's one of the best things to do. It's one of the best habits to create as a result of uh, giving up something as uh, as detrimental as porn. Yeah. Beautifully, yeah. beautifully Thanks said. for getting all this stuff out of me. I really appreciate it, Danny. Yes. My pleasure. This was phenomenally helpful. And um, I'm really grateful that this is there for people to listen to and watch. I appreciate it. Yes. Uh, and that's it. Thanks for coming on the podcast. And yeah, man, I appreciate you. And uh, yeah, this was awesome. Thanks, man.